This week's portion, as we have heard, tells the story of Noah and the ark, a portion that is familiar to us in part because of rise and shine, that beautiful song we heard a little earlier. And also, as Rabbi Bogdell mentioned, many beautiful images of animals walking two by two into a giant ark carefully crafted of wood. We also know that this flood drowns all other life on earth. As stated in Genesis chapter 7, verse 21, and all flesh that stirred on earth perished, birds, cattle, beasts, and all things that swarmed upon the earth, and all mankind. It is a stark and gruesome punishment for early humanity, not to mention the innocent animals that inhabited the earth at Noah's time. The editors of the Women's Torah Commentary conclude their reflection on this portion with several modern day poems describing challenges and trauma connected with the flood. Hannah Block wrote, the ark, noisy with children, angels, birds, dim, stuffy, close, the nest of home where Noah broods at sea. How can one think in such a place? And a poem by Rivka Miriam that begins, after the flood was over, Noah installed wheels on the ark, dragging it behind him in case the flood suddenly returned. It was not hard for me to transfer these themes in these poems from the flood to experience of living in this time of pandemic that has covered every inch of our planet. The waters of COVID-19 have yet to recede and the challenges of living with it continue to impact us. Some of us may feel the stress of living in our very own crowded ark. I'm, I'm one of these people. Some of us may be experiencing trauma caused by this unexpected global crisis. I'm also one of these people. Frankly, I haven't been so conscious of the difficulties the pandemic have had on me. There's so much I feel grateful for, and there have been some silver linings that have presented during these seven months. I've tended to focus on the truth of these blessings instead of the additional truth of how hard it has been. I can imagine Noah and his family thinking something similar as they counted their blessings to be on the ark, despite all they had to do on it and, and all they had lost. One can both appreciate the good in their life while also recognizing the struggles. In fact, to stay mentally healthy, we need to do both. The Mayo Clinic is one of many first-class institutions to publish guidance on how to stay mentally well during the pandemic. I bet Noah could have benefited from their advice, and no doubt we can too. They urge each of us to engage in self-care. Specifically, they recommend that we take care of our bodies, take care of our minds, and connect with others. There's a midrash that Noah and his family never slept when they, are, when they were on the ark. Perhaps this story, as well as I'm sure, thoughtful research, research has placed getting enough sleep on the top of the Mayo Clinic's list of ways to take care of our bodies. Exercise and eating healthy are also highly encouraged. As far as caring for one's mind, the clinic advises to use one moral compass and spiritual life for support and also encourages us to limit our exposure to the news media. The latter suggestion was, was not a problem for Noah as the Midrash states that he could never get his Wi-Fi to work. The Mayo Clinic has more specific recommendations worth considering, and I highly recommend we all take a look on their website for their document on COVID-19 and mental health. We know that Noah also 
kept his hope alive for a better day. Why else would he have sent out the dove to search for dry land after the rain had stopped? As many of us know, after the dove returned from its first trip, Noah waited a week and then sent the bird out again. After the dove's second voyage, it returned with an olive leaf in its beak. The first sign that that dry land was out there. And then one week later, Noah sent the dove out again, and this time it did not return. Noah knew then that the end to their floating was close, and it was. We too continue to send out version of doves, and while no definitive olive leaves have been returned, we must continue to keep our hope alive. Shimon Peres once said, there are no hopeless situations, only hopeless people. Noah, despite it all, found a way to stay hopeful, and it is my prayer tonight that we can help each other do the same. Maybe not all of us all at once, but enough of us taking care of ourselves, taking care of each other to help keep our hope alive. And maybe, just maybe, because of this care and hope, eons from now when the story of COVID-19 is told, they too will find a way to have their own version of rise and shine songs and images. Not of animals walking two by two, but of people in masks walking six feet apart, separate, but very much together.